Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to solar charge my 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery that I just got. So this is a mixed bag of solar panels. I used to have an extra one, but that one broke. That one was a 100 watt flexible panel, which I'm now using in the back here. This one here broke as a backing for my DIY solar panel that I have used for like 13 years. This is a DIY panel and the last year or so the bottom got rotted and I had to resolve the, the bus bar that got corroded but it's still working. So. I have a mixed bag of uh, solar panels and on a good day it will give me at least uh, 10 amps. So that's, that's what I'll be using to charge my battery. And I'm going to use a PWM inexpensive solar con controller. This is a Wind Kong solar charge controller. It's programmable. I have one set up for my lithium mine bank which has a different charging profile. With the lithium iron phosphate, I will be setting the charge to 14.2 volt and a floating charge of 13.5. But first I have to hook it up before I can connect the solar panel. So this is the screen power. Screen power, 100 amp hour lithium mine phosphate that I just got for $352 and then I had to pay tax. So around $380 on eBay I got from a US seller. And it came pretty quick. I haven't tested the capacity. I'm not gonna break open the case because that will damage the battery. I'll leave someone else to do that. Uh, it's close to $400. And uh, it came with a 7 amp charger. You can certainly use this to charge your battery. I, when you first got this, the voltage was 11.7 volt. So it was like maybe like 10% capacity instead of you're supposed to ship it at 30% capacity. Anyway, it took me uh, overnight to charge it. I started charging it at 12 o'clock with this charger. And then when I went to sleep at 10 o'clock, I measured the voltage. It was like 13.33, struggling to get up to 3.4. And then... Uh, the next morning, I came to check it was 14.6 and then when you disconnect the charger, then it drifts down to 13.6. Now it's 13.4. I use it a little bit just to, to test it out. 13.4 is like 99% charge. So that was over a week ago. And since I have... Uh, for some cables for it, number two wire. So I have bought a, a circuit breaker. This is the one that you're not supposed to use. Uh, I saw a video by Electronics and More. He said these are only good up to maybe like 60 to 70 amps. So I already on order a Busman automatic circuit breaker, 120 amp. So I will be using that and then uh, I probably put another number two Y here for the negative. This kind of Y came with the inverter. So I have two of those inverter. So I double up the, the negative. So I'll probably change it over to a regular number two wire. And I have for charging, 
the XT60 cable uh, number 12 good for 20 amps and then yeah can't do it have to do it with one hand okay so I have to hook this up to my solar charger So it took me overnight to charge this, so with a 7M charger. Okay, so now it's hooked up. Let's go to the charge controller. It's reading 13.3 volt from the battery. So to program this, this is the Wincong 30 amp. PWM, nothing fancy, $32 when I first got it. Now maybe more, maybe don't, they don't even sell it. But this is programmable, so it's suitable for different kinds of uh, batteries. All right, so to program it, you long press the set button here, and then you see it flashing, and it'll go through different parameters so this is the temperature so now you set the voltage I'm gonna set it to 14.2 14.2 and then the float voltage would be Thirteen point five, and then the rest will be by default. So now, if I flip my circuit breaker on, it should start charging. Okay, nothing coming in yet because I have to turn off my other charger down here because it's sharing the same solar panel. So now I have some charge coming in and you see the voltage went up to 13.4. So it is charging now. So that's how you set this up to solar charge and to for the display to cycle through you just press set and plus and it will start cycling through right right now there's one amp coming in that's all because it's morning time here and then they'll cycle through the different uh, functions uh, this one has a low control here you can Connect a 10 up to like a 10 amp load here, and it can be controlled by the charge controller. So, yeah, it's uh, I will use this charge controller when there's a power outage, otherwise, I will most likely be using the 7 amp charger. And I saw electronics and more uh, very good videos on all kinds of things anyway he was using a 30 amp power supply i have that too so i haven't tried that because the first 30 amp power supply that i bought came doa dead on arrival and uh, 30 amp you're putting a lot of charge in it and you would need maybe like number eight cables um, this is like I think number 10 so maybe I'll do that in the future but for now I'm just going to either use the included one which I don't think it will last because it's making a loud fan whirring noise when it is on and as a backup I'll use the solar charge controller there 
So that's how you set up the screen power 100 amp hour lithium ion battery. I forgot um, when you use this, you plug it in here. There's a, there's a port here. They use uh, what they call the aviator connector. There's an on off switch here. You can use USB power right from the battery. The only thing this doesn't have is a voltage meter. For well, that one, you have to pay like $20 more. I should have maybe bought that, but you can always connect your own volt meter. And you can use either this connection here or this connection here, but you cannot use both. So you can only use one of it. And I tried uh, the inverter. With, this is a 1500 watt inverter, continuous. And you can certainly power uh, anything up to a thousand watts, I would think. Uh, I wouldn't try to go over and, and test the limit of the BMS. I, I wouldn't try to when try to discharge it to under voltage and then let the BMS trip. Probably not to test. You don't want to test the BMS too much because uh, it might not wake up. That's the problem I had with uh, some of the BMS here. When I went over voltage, it trips and I didn't know how to reset it. So basically, I had this type of uh, BMS with these lithium ion packs and to reset the BMS I would have to unplug the XT connector and then use a small cable like this small wire, very thin wire and short out the negative and the positive just put it in there for like a split second that would reactivate the BMS. I would imagine with the BMS in here it would be the same but I don't want to start reactivating or, or mess around with the BMS. Just don't push it till it goes into protection. Um, until you know more about what type of BMS it is, you're not going to know because everything is sealed. And when I first got the battery, there was a little bit of a mark, like a white thing on the other side. There's a little bit of a white stuff here. So I don't know if it is the electrolyte leaking. I don't think so. More likely it was leaking from other batteries that they have because this is sealed. And at any leak, you wouldn't know anyway. Uh, you tilt it and nothing comes out because it's all sealed. So when you buy something like this, you're always a little concerned and uh, but after charging it overnight it went to full capacity and so far it's been working i used a lucky strap to tie it so i it is portable and i'm gonna show you uh what i'm gonna use this for i'm gonna disconnect the the battery from the charge controller so next time I connect this, I have to reprogram the charger to charge it again. So I'm going to bring this into my basement and I'm going to show you what I'm going to use this setup for. So one possible use is with this uh, diesel heater here. This is run by 12 volt. So I can connect the positive and negative to the wiring inside 
and you can run this all night with this battery here of course the diesel heater will have to be put outside and then the and then the hoses fed into the basement or whatnot and uh yeah so 12 volt yeah, it can power the fan the low plug and um and the fuel pump the diesel pump so that would be one way of using this battery don't need the inverter for this and then i would use the setup here let me turn on the light to power my gas boiler so this is in case there is a power outage so this should be able to power it all day because this is a gas boiler it doesn't use that much electricity it's the circulating pump or recirculating pump that uses maybe like a hundred watts but you can lower the demand of the pump by setting it to low instead of high that will cut down on the electricity use and then the rest of the power you need to run the the circuit board in there and there's a coil that generates the spark for the gas valve so you need uh, power for that so this battery with the inverter can supply the power and I have a transfer switch up here that I installed many years ago this is called the easy switch I think it's still they're still in business and I think it's $95 probably cheaper when I first got it basically this is like a brick in the in the wiring here and you hook your wire through the switch here and then when you have a power outage you would switch from normal to generator and then you plug your extension cable from your inverter to the plug here and then and then you switch it to generator so that would supply power to your gas boiler so you will have heat and with this backup um, it will run it for a day when this runs out I can use the backup of the backup system I have in my garage that should be able to run this for a little while while this is being recharged so that's the plan I think it will work for an oil burner, two oil burner needs about 8 amp to run. So if you set your pumps at low power, so this might just run it, uh, gas boiler definitely. And then the hot water heater doesn't need any electricity to run. So that will be on. So let's see readiness plan or emergency plan for the winter. All right, sorry about being so windy. Okay, thanks for watching.